Hey everyone, it's Samantha, back with a Wealthy Hairstylist YouTube channel, and today I am going to share with you my experience as a salon assistant. Oh yes, we've all had those dreaded days where we always assisted somebody and had to start from the bottom and work our way up to the top to where we are now. Um, and I am forever grateful for everything that I went through as a hairstylist, which had helped mold and grow my um, structure to how I kind of have evolved my business today. So let's kind of start back from, oh my goodness, I've been doing hair for 50. 15 years now so I had assisted for two years and I came home from college I was in a junior college and I came home and I already had my license because I went to beauty school while I was in high school I actually had dropped two varsity sports I played basketball and volleyball when I was in high school and I had dropped two sports varsity sports to be able to go to beauty school at night so school during the day, beauty school at night, and then I worked on the weekends. So I was always super busy, but I went away for school. I came home for one summer and my mom had told me to get off my lazy butt and get a job. So I actually went around all the salons local in town and I went in and I brought my resume and I personally introduced myself to every single person who was working at the front desk of every salon that I went to. I didn't have the best experience. A lot of people, you know, are not the friendliest sometimes. So um, people are just tossing my resumes. No one's looking for work. No one wants to hire an assistant. Um, so there was one salon left in town, which was a pretty popular salon at the time. And it was actually the last salon I went to because I didn't think I would really get hired there. But by chance, the last salon I went to, I lucked out and the stylist actually had saw me go up to the front, introduce myself, shake hands with people and drop off my resume. And the front desk actually had said, no, we're not looking. And she tossed my resume to the side. And the stylist at that time saw that and she's like, <clears throat> excuse me, I actually think I am looking for an assistant. And I was like, oh, okay. So I went over and I introduced myself. And sure enough, a couple weeks later, I was an assistant. So what did that involve? Well, the lady that I assisted for was very structured. Um, she had owned her own salon in the past, so she knew what she liked, what she didn't like. She was very clear on her services that she did. She ran a tight ship and her clients knew it. So she was crazy busy. We were working 40, 50 plus hours a week. She was double booked from like nine to nine. We worked so hard. And it, it was there that I assisted, that I actually learned, and I fell in love with color. She was a phenomenal colorist, and so I was like so lucky to get my hands deep into color. But of course, it took time. So I had to learn to fold foils properly for how she liked it, learn how to drape her clients. I had to do lessons for massaging techniques, for the shampoo bowl. I mean, it was learning how to blow dry with her, how to style, how she likes to style her clients. So it's all a learning process and it takes time. But also when I assisted her, you know, I was kind of torn between going back to college or if, if this is really a career path that I could make income. And it wasn't until, um, I guess I, she actually had me start to deposit her checks for her at the end of every week, I'd go to the bank for her and I would deposit her weekly checks and I would like write the total down. And I was like, dang, she actually does really good for herself. You know, I'm like, I think I could do this for a living too. And I just saw how happy all of her clients were and how passionate she was um, with doing hair. And I just learned to love it as the more I was doing it. Um, so it helps when you have a really great mentor that could 
guide and train you along the way. Um, a funny story when I was assisting her, and this is kind of how I really started to get organized with my craft and especially with money management. Um, so not only did I help her color hair and prep clients, but I would also do personal errands for her. And I remember one day at the salon, I had assisted her. They had a tiny like little linen closet. I mean, probably the size of a space that you would put a stackable washer and dryer in it. And they would keep all their clean linens in there. And she came in one day with a trash bag, like a big trash bag full of receipts. And these were all of her business receipts from color purchases to equipment, to shears, to foils. I mean, anything and everything that had to do her business, it was literally a bag just stuffed full of receipts. And she handed me the bag and she said, here you go, you need to organize all of my receipts by the month and then categorize each month and break it down into categories from like salon centric or cosmoprof, um, food receipts, um, you know, her shopping receipts. I mean, everything I had to like get organized. It probably took me a week and a half, maybe almost two weeks to go through her entire trash bag. It was crazy guys. I sat, I literally sat in that linen closet on top of like dirty towels and I had the receipts everywhere in the closet just trying to get organized but by her making me do that I actually I was like oh my gosh like I see and I understand why you have to be so organized with your business to understand your expenses what you're spending why you're spending how much you're spending so actually within my online business course, I have a whole module about business and money management. And I actually create a whole spreadsheet for you, which I have learned and I still use for my business to this day. A spreadsheet with all my business expenses to help you calculate your gross profit, your net profit. I mean, everything is on there and it's all laid out and you just gotta fill it in. So by doing this, like 13 years ago, it helped me understand why you have to be so organized and not only be able to do the art and the craft of what you love, but to be also understand your numbers and to understand the process of how you run your business and the expenses. So that way you are not left in the hole at the end of the week. So it was, um, it was a fun experience to say the least. And and probably at that time, as much as I hated being stuck in the linen closet, organizing all of her little receipts rather than doing hair, it helped me understand her numbers and seeing how she ran her business. And so that way I knew down the road when I, it was time for me to go off and you know, rent my own chair and to start to grow my clientele, how I was going to stay organized myself and how I was going to help and ease the process so... I too at the end of the day did not have a bag of trash, a bag, a trash bag full of receipts that I had to go through. So it kind of helped me prepare myself for the future. Um, but also being an assistant, let me see. So I assisted for two years and um, before I went on the floor, she had requested that I had to go to Sassoon and take a cutting course, which was amazing. Um, I was super impressed with the school and the method and how they do their training um, and it definitely helped me understand obviously the art of how to do a bob because that is their niche. Vidal Sassoon was known for his graduated bobs but even just the structure and the ABCs of how they do their hair cutting. Um, once you understand that you could kind of grow and take that method and tweak it for how you want to cut hair. So once I took the Sassoon course, I came back and um, I assisted a little bit longer and I actually had a test to get onto the floor. Um, and I we worked in a rental salon, it wasn't a commission salon, which most commission salons, they have a whole process for training and steps and tests that you have to do before you get onto the floor. 
So even though it's a rental salon, the, assist, the lady that I assisted kind of treated it like a commission. So she had expectations for me. I had to bring in so many models. I had to do certain color services and hair cutting services, but I had to do three models to get onto the floor. Um, one was a men's haircut um, without clippers. So everything scissor over comb. And then I had to do um, a layered haircut on somebody who did not have layers. So I had to create my own guide. And then I had to do a graduated bob haircut on somebody who did not have a bob to begin with. So then too, I had to create my own guide with the graduation bob and create the own haircut. So once I did that and I passed all of those, I was able to go onto the floor. So I, like I said, I assisted for two years and even though in the beginning I thought, I was like, God, this is, I felt like ready after a year to go on my own. I'm telling you, two years was definitely worth it. So when you are an assistant, take that time and really soak up anything and everything you can from the person you are working for. And if you feel whoever you're assisting, you're not getting enough back, like talk to your hairstylist that you're working for and let them know the things that you want to work on, what you feel you want to specialize in. Um, and even on my days off, like when I was not assisting, I used to work at the front desk for free. Um, I used to just watch other stylists in the salon to see how they cut hair, how they styled hair, how they colored hair. I was just always watching and observing and getting my hands involved whenever and however I could. So don't try to rush the process of being an assistant. It is worth it in the long run. Take that education, soak it in, and grow from it and understand how that stylist is coloring, why they're coloring. And I am such a creature of habit. I like, I learned to memorize how she colored hair, how she cut hair, how she formulated, why she formulated. And then we would start formulating in the back room together. And so it kind of was like, we were both coloring the client's hair together rather than just her. And I felt like I was involved in the process. So whether you are an assistant or if you have an assistant, find ways to have your assistant grow along the way with you. So you never want to keep your assistant stagnant. There's always room for growth. You have to have them be hands-on. If your assistant can't be hands-on, they're not going to stay long with you. They need to be involved in the art and the craft. So that's my experience as a hairstylist. So I would say after two years of assisting, I finally went on the floor. I worked in a rental salon and I rented a chair part-time for about three months. And then I grew my clientele enough after three months to go full-time. And then after that, it just kind of flourished from there and I evolved my craft I figured out what I wanted to specialize in. Um, I even dabbled in bridal, makeup, and hair, and then still back into coloring. And now I specialize in extensions. So I've done like a full circle of everything and I've kind of keep trying to evolve my craft, but it all goes back down to the assisting and the basics of what you learn to help evolve you to where you are today. So don't be afraid to assist. It is worth it in the end. And I hope um, what I shared with you today will help anybody and somebody. So don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys back here soon. Thanks so much.